The Old Testament reading for the resurrection of our Lord is recorded in the prophet Job, the 19th chapter. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is recorded in St. Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, the 15th chapter. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone. For they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia! Alleluia! Christ is risen. risen Alleluia! Indeed, rejoice, beloved. Let your shouts of rejoicing and thanksgiving cause the very depths of hell to tremble. And the vaults of the highest heavens resound. Let all creation hear the triumphant song of God's victory over sin and Satan. This is the day of Jesus' vindication. And it is the day of the vindication of your hope and the holy Christian faith. The veil of darkness has been forever lifted because the stone of death has been rolled back And the tomb is empty. 
It is the joy of this day, this reality that brings life and hope into the very darkest corners of our life. There is no corner of despair or sadness or death where the bright light of this day cannot reach. The resurrection of Jesus means everything. It is so much more than just a nice end to the story. It is the story. Without the resurrection, there is no story. There is no hope. Without the empty tomb, there is still only death. As St. Paul writes, And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. But the tomb is empty. We have the eyewitness accounts of those who saw not only the tomb, but also the one who should have been in that tomb, the one who was in the tomb. The one who had before their very eyes breathed his last and given up the Holy Spirit. Jesus was dead. There was no question about it. That was no phantom on the cross. The scourges tore through real flesh. It was real blood that came pouring out, real hands, real feet, real head, and real side. And now, That same Jesus of Nazareth, whose lifeless body was lovingly wrapped and placed into the new tomb, was very much alive. Alleluia! Your faith is not in vain. Your hope in this Christ is not misplaced. The sacrifice is complete. And it is sufficient. There is nothing of your sin that has not been forgiven. The sin you know. The sin you don't. The sin that you committed yesterday. The sin that you will fall into tomorrow. The sin that daily wages war against you. The sin of the entire world. All of it is 200% Freely forgiven. That is the double blessing that God has poured out to you for all your sins. If that were not true, then Jesus of Nazareth would still be laying wrapped in the linen shroud and the burial cloth. The entrance of the tomb would still be sealed to this day. If Jesus didn't rise on that first Easter, then Peter, James, Paul, all of the apostles, Polycarp, and countless thousands of martyrs would have foolishly shed their blood for nothing and probably wouldn't have if they had been in any doubt. If the witness of those who left their own tombs when Jesus rose was unreliable, If there was reason to doubt those who said that they saw him, who, by the way, had their own reservations. We simply cannot spend enough time meditating on the great blessing of the resurrection and everything that it means for us. I'm afraid that too often we think of the resurrection only in terms of the day of our death, or that day when Jesus returns to judge the living and the dead. But nothing could be further from the truth. The resurrection of Jesus is your reality today. And not just today, but every day. We live in the unending day of resurrection. This is the substance and the joy of holy baptism. Jesus rose from the dead and is this day and for eternity risen. You were baptized and are this day 
and for all of eternity baptized. It's not simply a metaphysical or mental reality. It's not a metaphor or mythology to teach and empower to you to rise from your malaise and go do great things in the name of Jesus. You have been raised from death. Now, this day, death has no power over you. Today, your sins have been taken away from you. Today, today you are forgiven precisely because Christ is risen and you are baptized. We simply cannot be reminded of this truth enough. And that is why every Sunday, every day really, is an Easter celebration. When we say we live from Sunday to Sunday, from divine service to divine service, we're saying that we live in the reality and the strength, the daily strength of Jesus' resurrection. Your redemption is an everyday reality that has every single day consequences because Jesus is still this day raised from the dead. Are you afraid because your body is plagued with sickness and frailty? Rejoice. Today, Christ is risen and you are as whole and perfect as He is right now. Now it's true that you don't see it and it won't be revealed until the last day, but that doesn't mean that it isn't true right now. Are you tormented by fear because of the many thousands of enemies, seen and unseen, that have arisen against you? Rejoice! Today, Christ is risen and your victory over your enemies has already been won. They may kick and scream and rage and try to convince you otherwise, but that is only because they know for certain what we struggle to believe, that they have been vanquished by Jesus. The tomb is empty, and there is nothing that they can do to change that. They cannot stuff Jesus back into the grave. Their defeat isn't only certain, as though it's a one-day-in-the-future thing. It is now accomplished. There will be no other outcome. You are the victor because your Lord, who bears your flesh, lives. Has your conscience been driven into the lowest depths of hell because of the great weight of your sin? Do you despair that there could be any mercy for you? Do you feel the lead weight of condemnation around your neck because you know that no matter how hard you might try, it will never be sufficient, and you will never be sure that it is enough. Rejoice. Today, Christ is risen, and all the wages of all your sin have been paid down to the last penny. His work, His death, His absolution, those are sufficient. There simply can't be any sin not paid for because Jesus is alive. If his sacrifice hadn't been enough for sin, there would be no Easter hymns, no alleluias, no preaching, no absolution. If any sin at all wasn't forgiven, then not a single sin was forgiven. The death of God's Son was either sufficient or it wasn't. Jesus lives. It was most certainly sufficient for you 
and for every sinner under heaven? Are you overwhelmed by the cares and the concerns of this world, struggling desperately every day simply to get through and lay your head back on the pillow? Are you at your wit's end because everything you seem to do seems to end in failure? And your life seems little more than a string of one unfortunate event after another. Does every day feel like you're going head to head against God himself? Rejoice. Today, Christ is risen and the steadfast love of your heavenly Father has been demonstrated to you absolutely, unequivocally. Every trial and every struggle that rises up to meet you will only abound to your blessing now and into eternity. Because there is no longer the punishment for sin that you fear as Job did. How can, how can there be when Jesus has already endured all of it? You don't have to sin. You don't have to fear. You don't have to worry and doubt. You don't have to be angry. You do those things and whatever other sins you commit because you doubt the reality and the blessings of this day. Like the women and the disciples, your heart is reluctant to believe the magnitude of the angelic preaching. He is risen. He is not here. But that is precisely the glorious truth that the Lord holds before your eyes when he holds before you the peace of his body and his blood, crucified and risen for you. Your sin will not help you. It will not make anything better. It will not bring you joy or happiness. It will only, always and ever, bring you more terror. Your flesh wants to return to the death from which it came. It would have you believe that freedom is found in chasing after your passions and pleasures du jour. But those things are only slavery, and death. Those are futile pursuits. Jesus lives. And the ruler of this world has been exposed for the liar that he is. Life and peace are found only and always in Christ. In the baptism which he gives, he brings you his own death. He allows you to claim his death as your own. You have already died. There is no longer any death, physical or spiritual, that has any claim on you. When your eyes close for the last time in this world and you draw your final earthly breath, you will be with Christ who lives, the living Lord of a living people. Your corruptible flesh will be laid to rest only until that day when our Lord rolls back the stone of your grave and your corruptible flesh is changed and made incorruptible, just as He now wears your incorruptible flesh, your brother in the flesh who goes before you. Even now, today, you share in His incorruptible flesh. What else is it to share in the Holy Communion than to be united to Christ, to share in all that is now His, including His immortality, His ascension into the heavenly places where poverty, cancer, terrorists, not even the Prince of Darkness will ever have a place. All of this and nothing less is what your shepherd feeds you when he places his body and pours his blood into your mouth in the Holy Supper. Jesus Christ is risen today. 
today and every day. Your sins have been forgiven. Your death has been removed from you. Your grave has been opened and the stone will never be able to close it again because death no longer has any power over your Savior. Dearly beloved, it is my fervent prayer that the joy of Christ's resurrection is yours, not just this day that has been set aside in the calendar, but every single day. Because the day of Jesus' resurrection has no end. May God, the Holy Spirit, grant us each and every day to find fresh peace and joy and strength in this everyday reality. Jesus Christ is risen, and so are you. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of Jesus. Please stand.